Dude, go get him. That's sweet. Oh, hey, welcome to Flindog Woodwork. This is Brian. So I'm Irish, so I've always had a deep appreciation for the Irish jig. As you can see from this guy right here, he knows exactly how to do it. But today, we're going to take a look at woodworking jigs. I just purchased three woodworking jigs from Amazon.com. I'm going to show you exactly how they work. I'm super excited to get into these, so let's start with the first one. So the first product that we're going to talk about today is made by MicroJig. And I know a lot of you have heard about MicroJig as they make the gripper as well as the grip block. Now I absolutely love this grip block. This provides me a lot of support as I'm making cuts at the table saw. But this next jig, made by MicroJig, should provide similar support. Let's take a look at it. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. It's the match fit dovetail clamps. Now this is an excellent tool that I've seen a lot of woodworkers on YouTube use, so I'm super excited to get into it. The other thing that I purchased along with this set is the actual half inch 14 degree dovetail bit. Now you may already have a dovetail bit in your arsenal, but I did, so I needed to purchase this as well. This will provide the grooves that we need so that we can slide these clamps directly into our workpiece. So let's open this up and see how it works. So right off the bat, I'm super stoked about these clamps. Dude, I am totally stoked. Mm -hmm. That's because I've already figured out a secondary purpose that I can use these clamps for in my shop. I'll show you that in just a second. If we take a look at the actual tip of the clamp, I was expecting it to be in the shape of a dovetail, but it's flat and that still will provide all the support that we need as we slide it into those grooves. So let's take a look at that secondary purpose I was just talking about. So if you have an MFT, you can see that these micro jig clamps are built very similarly to the actual Festool clamps that I use with my MFT as well as my track saw. Now one complaint that I have about these clamps is that they tend to slip when you're clamping down your workpiece and that can cause all sorts of problems. But with this, since it's using a screw lever, it's not gonna slip on you. So I'm kind of excited about that. If we take a look at the MFT, you can see that they slide in just like your regular MFT clamps and you can tighten them down and it's secure just like the MFT clamps. If we take a look at our track saw, you can also see that these micro jig clamps will also fit right into that track saw and can be used with your track saw as well. So that's another feature that I wasn't expecting to get out of these clamps. So I've already got two bonus uses of these clamps that I wasn't even anticipating. So I'm super happy about that. But let's get into what I actually intended on using these for. Let's go over to the router table. So over at the router table, I've got a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood that we're gonna make a very simple jig with. We'll be able to use this jig as a tapering jig as well as a jointing jig. If we don't have a joiner, we'll be able to joint some wood right from this jig. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna strike a line down the length of this workpiece at one inch from each side. Then we're gonna strike lines three inches down the length of this board. So let's do that right now. So now that we've laid out those layout lines for this actual jig, I've carried those lines to the side of the board. We're gonna use these lines to line up our router bit so that we can make those perfectly spaced lines across the workpiece. So let's get to that right now. So the first thing that I've done is I've raised my router bit to 3 eighths of an inch. This is what's recommended by MicroJig and it should give us plenty of space to put our clamps into those grooves. So let's get started making some cuts and then I'll show you what it looks like once we're done. So now that I've made my first cut, I wanna test this cut with the actual clamp to make sure it fits. And as you can see from this, it slides very nicely across the cut, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now I'll just simply make the rest of the cuts and then we'll test it over at the table saw. All right, folks, here's a closer look at the cuts we just made onto our jig. As you can see, the clamps fit very nicely into those grooves and they go down the length of the board as well as the width of the board. Now you will notice that I didn't make a through cut on the edge that's gonna be facing the blade. That's because I wanted to have some sort of stop as we push our clamps through so that the metal on the actual clamp will never touch the blade. And that's something that I highly encourage you to think about. Now the only thing left to do is to test it out by making a tapering cut as well as doing a jointing cut. So let's see how that works. So let's make our first cut. For this example, I wanna actually joint this two by four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push our jig up against the blade and then our fence up against the jig. We're gonna tighten down our fence and then pull our jig out so that we can place our workpiece in. We can place our two by four 
on the actual jig so that the edge is just a little bit proud of the actual jig. Once we're comfortable with the setting of the 2x4, it's time to make the cut. For the tapering, it's almost the exact same process. All you have to do is to figure out the angle that you want and lock down your workpiece. I'm just going to go with an arbitrary angle here and lock it down. Now we can make the cut. So just like that, we have a beautiful tapered edge that's smooth, crisp, and clean. Just like the edge that we did when we jointed this board. So I'm really pleased about this because I do a lot of tapers, especially when I'm building furniture. If you want that very smooth, very perfect, very nice tapered edge on your legs, point. Nice, nice. Nice. This is the perfect jig for you. So let's take a look at our second jig of the day. That is a saw seam regulator. Now you may ask, what the heck is this? What the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. It looks fairly complicated. It's got a lot of levers and a lot of attachments, but it's really not that difficult. I first saw one of these on Stumpy Nubs and I thought I'd give it a try for myself. So let's take a closer look at this. So this tool may seem like it's a little bit intimidating. It's got a lot of moving parts and two knobs on it that allow you to tighten those parts. So what exactly is this tool used for? Well, it's used to make perfect dados and rabbits. As you can see from this test piece I did earlier, this dado is absolutely perfect for this 3 quarter inch plywood. So let's take a look and see how we set one of these up so that we can get a perfect dado every single time. So the real strength of this jig is that it allows you to account for the curve of your blade when setting up your dados. To set up this jig, you simply push your workpiece until it touches the blade. Then you push the gray piece of this jig until it touches the actual workpiece that you're going to be cutting through. Then you push your red tab until it touches the other side of the blade. Now your saw blade is sandwiched between your workpiece and this red tab. Once everything is aligned, you tighten it down by screwing this knob right here. Now that we have the curve of the blade figured out, it's time to figure out how thick the dado should be. So we take our workpiece and we create a slot here that our actual workpiece will fit into. So as I place my workpiece in, I create a tight fit by pushing this down and locking it into place by twisting this knob. Now we take this to the actual fence of the table saw. On this workpiece, you can see I penciled in an area here where I want the dado to actually land. So now let's look at how we place the jig on the actual table saw fence. So the first thing that we do is we find the left hand side of that dado. Then we place our actual workpiece on the miter gauge and we make sure that the saw blade will cut on the inside of that dado for the very first cut. Once we have everything aligned, we take our actual jig and we place the workpiece against the gray metal bar and we move our fence so that everything's aligned perfectly. Once that's aligned, we lock down the fence. Now that we have everything aligned, it's time to make our first cut. So now let's go back to the jig. So now that we have the left hand side of the dado cut out, it's time to take our workpiece and rest it against the metal bar that's on this jig. Now that we have it resting against that metal bar, we can make our second cut. Now that we've made the left hand side and the right hand side of the cut, we can hog out the middle. <laughs> Now that we have that dado cut out, we can then take our other piece of plywood, place it into that dado, and slide it in. And that's about as tight of a dado as you can get. Now a little bit of follow up with this actual jig. This is pretty complicated, I'm not going to lie. It took me a long time to get that dado perfectly set up, but if you're looking for very tight fitting dados where you're just going to use a friction fit, this may be the tool for you. So I love strippers. I mean strips. I have a bunch of cutoffs here that are thin strips, but none of them are the exact same width the entire length of the actual strip. And that's what this next jig is all about. Let's take a look at it. So this is the Fulton Thin Strip Jig. Now this thing was created so you could make a lot of repetitive thin strips on your table saw without having to make a lot of adjustments. This thing fits right into your miter slot as it's got a bar on the back. If we look at the very tip, it's got a bearing that your workpieces rest against so that you can easily slide it through your table saw. 
let's take a closer look at how this works. So as I said before, this jig fits right into your miter slot. Now it does have a scale that goes from one to six, but I'm not quite sure what this is used for because when it's fully extended, so it touches the blade, it's about at four and seven eighths of an inch. Now maybe as you're making an adjustment to your thin rip, you take the difference between the two measurements to figure out how much of a difference you're making in your rip. But that, I'm not quite sure. So one thing that's critical with this jig is you wanna have the jig in front of the blade. If you have it in line with the blade or behind the blade, there's a good chance that this jig is gonna pinch the wood and create kickback. So as I said before, when we put it in front of the blade, when it's fully extended, it's about four and seven eighths of an inch. So if I wanted to make a quarter inch rip, I need to pull it back so it's at four and three quarters of an inch. Once you have that measurement in line, you lock it down and now you're ready for the cut. To do this, you simply push your fence so that the actual workpiece is squeezed between the actual jig and the fence. Then you turn the saw on, you're ready to make the cuts. So let's do that right now. So here's the first cut. Now that we've made our first cut, we place our workpiece back in front of the blade and then we move our fence so that the workpiece is pinched between the jig and the actual table saw fence. Then we can make our second cut. So of course I was cutting into plywood, but when you take a closer look at these two strips, you can see that they're exactly the same width, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now this is perfect if you're adding some exotic wood to something like a cutting board or an inlay, and you can have just that little bit of piece that's an accent to any work piece that you're working on. So I think I'll definitely be using this jig. So you may be asking, what's my impression of these three jigs after using them for a bit? Well, if I had to give a grade to each one, I'd give the micro jig an absolute A+. This thing is absolutely great for doing things like tapering legs for furniture. Not only that, but it comes with these great clamps that not only can be used with jigs like this, but they can also be used on the MFT table or my track saw, which is just an added bonus. I'd give the thin rip jig an A-. minus For the price, you just can't beat it. If you need to add just a little bit of exotic wood to things like a cutting board, this is a great tool for that. Lastly, when we look at the saw seam regulator, I'd probably give this Meh. a C. The setup for me was just a little bit too tedious, and I don't frankly do a lot of dados where I do a friction fit, so this is something that I may not use that often. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these three jigs today. I know I enjoyed showing them to you, and some will get more use than others, but I hope you learned a little bit and you can make a decision if they're right for your workshop. Until next time, take care. Well, thanks for joining me today and checking out these three woodworking jigs. I really enjoyed learning how to use them and I hope you enjoyed watching. If you get a chance, I'd love to get your subscription and leave a like. Also hit that notification bell so you can be informed when future videos come out. As always, take care until I see you again.